welcome to the Extra Mile. I'm Linda Boudreau. Our guest today really needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. We have Chubby Carrier with us today, uh, the ambassador of Zotico, <laughs> uh, he, a man who has really, I think, helped Zotico get launched to a whole new level and has promoted Acadiana, Lafayette, and Louisiana all over the country, all over the world. So, Chubby, it is just so nice to have you here it in our studio. Here. It is good to be here with, with you. With us. It's Thank you here. so really much. Good, really good. It's always good when you're home and can kind of hang out with folks. Huh? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. We was over at uh, downtown last night for the big red, white, and boom. Oh, I know. What a great night, huh? Great night. I got a chance to perform with the Acadiana Symphony Orchestra. How did that go? I missed it. Unbelievable. You. Unbelievable. You know, throughout all my years and my, my travels, and I have never played with an orchestra before. Never. And what a way to do it here in my home state of Louisiana. Well, you know, we're just proud that you're here and that, you, yeah. that you're doing all this. Thank you. I guess, I don't know if people really know that much about, about your career and what all you're doing, but how did you get started with this whole thing anyway? You know, a long time ago, my grandfather <clears throat> played this kind of music, which we call Zydeco. Well, before then, well, there was... Uh, was it called Zydeco then? No, no, no. Back then, there was uh, Baby and Calvin Carrier. They played the fiddles. They were fiddle players. Okay. But they would call it Lala. Lala. You know? And uh, whenever they, have, they had a little dance, they would call it the fiddle do. But back then in 1930, when they were playing, uh, Baby and Calvin would play fiddles. Uh, my grandfather was the accordion player, and uh, my dad was a guitar player. So was all, this music was always in my family at all times. And uh, they used to have those little house dances back in the day. That's and what was a house dance? What happened at house dances? Oh, that's the, you know, my grandfather told me, he said, you know, we didn't have a lot of clubs back then. We had to make our own parties. And a lot of times we made our own parties we were at my their, their ancestors or cousins or uncles, someone's house. So first and foremost, they would have bring somebody, would bring over a dish or someone in the kitchen is cooking up some good food. Okay, yum, yum, yum. it's dinner time. It's dinner time, but after dinner time, it's time, he said, you're going to need to move that table right there and you need to move that, that carpet because that's going to become the dance floor. Because we can dance right here, right now. It's the dance floor in someone's living room in the house. And so most of the time there was one bedroom homes. You know, mm -hmm. but they had a living room, and that that was the dance floor, and that was where they set up the stage at, at that in that living room. So as a kid coming up, watching my daddy and my grandfather. But that's where Fado Dose came from, right? You put the babies to bed in that one bedroom. They, the grown-ups got the dance in the big living room, that's right? That's right. That's yeah, right. They yeah. put us to bed, but I was always that little sneaky when they oh, wanted you to stay up. <laughs> listening. As you can hear their foot stomping and get that, <laughs> that, 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 and I said, oh, I'm going to see what's going on over there. Oh, you are going to miss that one. I wouldn't want to miss that one. No. <laughs> So the fatal dudes actually started before there was a Zydeco, you know? Okay. Because it was just part of the tradition. It was just part of the tra tradition mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, <clears throat> a lot of the times uh, the Zydeco at that time wasn't named Zydeco Music. Um, Clifton Chenier named it, I think, in 1955. So Clifton came up with the name Zydeco. Yes, because, okay. you know, they, you'd have their fatal do, they'd have their little uh, uh, um, house parties, but they never had a name for it. La La, they said, well, we need a name. Clifton Chenier used to sing Le Jadeco Son Pasale, which means snap beans is not salty. And he said, oh, how they cool, huh? How they cool? Oh, Zadiko. I'm going to call it Zadiko. Don't you love it? Don't he you rhymed. just love he rhymed it? The, he just rhymed with Hadiko. And that, that's it. That's the name of our music. We're going to call it Zadiko. Okay, and now we got it. Now we got it, 1955. Okay. okay. But my dad in the 60s played this music, but he was a guitar player. But my grandfather was a accordion player. But daddy, of course, wanted to follow behind his dad's footsteps. And in me coming up as a kid, I, I had... You know, my, my PlayStation, Atari, and, and Xbox was instruments. So so you weren't playing with the Atari. You were playing with the accordion. The accordion or the drums or the, or the guitar. Because this is what we had at home in my dad's utility room was instruments. We had what instruments. What a great way to grow up. Oh, it's a huh? wonderful way. You cannot beat that. This is Talking about tradition, family tradition. Yeah. You yeah. know, knowing that when it rained, my grandfather, my dad would sit out on the front porch. And said, well, we can't work today, so we can play the music. And we'd sit around and watch it rain and watch them perform on the instruments. What a beautiful thing. Oh, what a wonder. And I was just saying to someone here today, you know, what a great, what a great community to live in. You walk down the street and you hear this wonderful music coming beautiful. off the porch. Beautiful. It's just, it, can't, it doesn't get any better than that. No, no. People from all over the world come here to see us do these kind of things. And, uh, you know, to know that I was a kid. I was a kid in the candy store was watching my father perform, my grandfather perform, my uncles and cousins perform. I'm like, what a way to come up in the 70s. How wonderful. Beautiful. beautiful. So what did you start? You didn't start with the accordion, which is a bit complicated. No, I, I started with my Wii. My Wii was my, my drums. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing uh, 
a little bit. Well, I'll take that back. I started playing a little bit of guitar first. I wanted to learn how to play the guitar. Of course, yeah, you know, you're a kid, you get bored, you want to move on. Mm -hmm. says, okay, I want to try the bass. So okay. tried the bass, and all of a sudden the drums caught my attention. And I said, oh, man, I like the sound of that. And I used to beat on my mom's pots and pans. Oh, I know she loved that. And she was just raving going, Roy, and that's my dad, you need to get your son some drums because he's tearing up my pots. <laughs> <laughs> I can't cook and he's got my pots. We got to put the beans in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> so daddy bought me a drum kit, started playing the drums. But what got me and grabbed my attention when I look up and I seen my daddy, he was playing with his eyes closed and he was making music. And I look at him and I said, wow. I would love to play the accordion. He was in the zone. He was huh? in the zone. He had his eyes closed. He had his head cocked back. And he was just singing the blues. And, and he was singing the blues in French, singing it in French. And I said, Daddy, he said, son, this is our therapy. Yeah. He said, I couldn't afford no psychiatry, no <laughs> doctor. What we did, we sung our blues. We sung the blues. We, we, we sung our troubles away. We lived them. We sung them. And, and, he, they told and, we, and, we, and we, we rose above them. They told the story in their music. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, wow, yeah, if you listen to it, the hard times they had coming up, um, the loneliness, you know, just things about yeah. life in general. Yeah. But they played their instrument and they sung it away, got it all out, you know? And I said, he said, that was my therapy. Yeah, yeah. Because I seen his head cocked back and he just sitting up there singing that song going, wow. That is so powerful. That's powerful. That is so powerful. That is powerful. Yeah. So that's when I said, Daddy, I want to learn how to play the accordion. And he says, really? Because my grandfather played, and he played, and he goes, okay. So he started teaching me on a Hona Corona three, which was a Mexican accordion. And a lot of Mexicans would use that style accordion because we didn't have any accordions that three row here. Those, those accordions would come from Texas at the time. Before we had our little accordion makers like uh, Mr. Junior Martin, Mr. Larry Miller, and also uh, over at Mark Savoy. Mm -hmm. So they may started making the uh, Acadian accordions. Oh, that's what that one is? We're going to get so, some close up on yeah, the accordion yeah. in a few minutes. So back in the day, no, this is not what this is. But back in the day, that's what they were before all our little guys got older and decided to retire and can't do it no more. We need some young ones coming up to yeah, do that. I'm just going to put the call out we now. Need some, we, we, we need, do. It's we're great We're calling art. on some great young art. guys that can learn how to make these accordions here in Acadiana. It matters. It really, really matters. It truly matters. It, does. it truly matters. It does. But it caught my attention, and Daddy started teaching me a, a couple of things on the accordion. I used to wake up early in the morning at 5.45 because Pass Part 2 was on. <laughs> I could not wait to see Clifton Chenier on Pass Part 2. That was the only time I could see him. I was, what, seven, eight years old? I couldn't go in the nightclubs. You were just a little kid. I was, yeah, young. And I was like, I'm going to wake up out here. Uh, Jim Olivier talking, I don't know what to say. Clifton Shin, yeah. That was like my wake up call. Oh, how wonderful. Because my dad was up at every morning at 5 a.m. I don't know why. Daddy was just up early. 5 a.m. having his coffee and his cigarette. And it he, was a day. Yeah, it was a day. That's what they did. Yeah. And he's having his coffee and his cigarette, and he's watching Clifton, and he's just looking at TV. But me as a kid heard that. I was the only one to creep, creep out of the bed and go sit in front of the TV and just stare and just watch. And I goes, wow, Clifton Chenier. And he had this big accordion. It was a piano style because Clifton, Clifton played a lot of blues. Yeah. A yeah. lot of blues mm -hmm. in his music. Mm -hmm. And I just watch it. I goes, mm -hmm. ah, how awesome is that? Clifton Chenier was like my Ray Charles of music. For Zadiko, you know? And for a kid to see that, unbelievable. So he set the standard for you. He set the standard for me. Yeah. So I said, Daddy, I definitely want to learn how to play one of these things, man. Well, did your daddy teach you? Yeah, so daddy got me. I, he had his at home, and I used to always mess around with it. And I used to just play on it. <laughs> then I took it, and I used to do this because I didn't know how to play it. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. First and foremost, we got to tell you, this is, a, this is cardboard. You can go too far and you can actually tear it up. Mm. So he started said, teaching me. He said, let me teach you how to play the accordion. If you want to play, you don't need to go no further than this. This is your air button. And I said, oh, okay. So he started teaching me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I start hearing that. I said, oh, my goodness. Oh. I want to learn how to play this thing. So every morning, so when Christmas came by, that it had in the box. He says, he told, oh. he look at my, wi my his wife and my mom. He look at it, he goes, I got to give it to him. I can't let him sit it in there the whole time. <laughs> he was more anxious to give it to me for me. I didn't even know it was in that box. He had it all wrapped up. He says, oh, I got to give it to him. I gotta give. He just so excited. He got to give it to him. So I think like December 1st, he gave it to me before Christmas. And he said, well, I'm going to let you open it because I don't want it to, to rust in the box. You know, you can't right. you can sit there. So I said, oh, what, what are you talking about? He says, I'm going to let you open up your Christmas present really early. And there it was. A Hona Corona 3 accordion. <gasps> what a gift. Oh, my God. Ten years old. I get an accordion for Christmas. How many kids get an accordion for Christmas? But your daddy knew his son. Yes, he your did. Your daddy knew my his daddy boy. Knew. He knew. He knew. He seen it in my eyes. He yeah. saw it in my eyes. He well, you said, can feel, I could feel it across this table right now. Yeah. I mean, you were just born with it. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. He saw it. He said, he's going to be my accordion player. Yeah. And he had my little brother and my sister, but... Do guy. they play? Yeah, my brother plays drums. He's playing accordion as well. Okay. But I was that one who had that eye of the tiger. It. You, you could just see it. it. Yeah. He yeah. saw that passion. I would just sit there when I look at him, I just stare at him, go. I was all I was serious. And he tell my mom, look at Chubby. He is so <laughs> focused right now. <laughs> you know, I was. Yeah, well, you know you love that. Yeah, you the kids were mom. outside and I love to play football. I was a football player. But the minute he, I could be playing football, I got the football in my hand, and I'm 10, 11 years old now, and I'm running down out here, I hear <laughs> the football come running out my hand. I drop it and he goes, Hey, Chubb, where you going? I said, my daddy's playing music. <laughs> I got to go see. I got to go see. So I would go leave my friends in the yard and go sit and watch my dad and my grandfather and my cousins play their music. Did you ever get to play with your dad and your grandfather? Yes, because what happened is that I was the drummer. See, this is what came about with me. Daddy had a drummer that was always late. He, your daddy had a band. He had a band. Yeah. Roy Carey and the Night Rockers. And they played in clubs. Huh? They played in clubs and played okay, in house desks and church, church halls. Okay. So your granddaddy played just house parties, right. and your dad kind of got out in the community more. Daddy got more got out in the community, playing the clubs. Because the 70s, 80s, they had clubs then, right. you know. My daddy, my grandfather and my uh, cousin, Bebe, no, there was a lot of house dances. But uh, I would hear it, and in Sunday, we'd go to church. We were Catholics, and we'd go to church <laughs> from, like, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and everybody would meet at Uncle Floyd's house, Uncle Murphy's house. After church, we all, somebody was meeting up on Sunday after church because there was a big barbecue somewhere. Yeah. Every yeah. Sunday was a big barbecue at someone's house. And that's where we would go and say, well, today's going to be at Uncle Butch house or Uncle Murphy, Uncle Floyd. But the instrument would be packed in the car. Waiting. Waiting. So we have the barbecue. And after the barbecue, by 1, 30, 2 o'clock, here goes the table, there goes the rug. And here comes the band that's set up in the living room. And I'm telling them, they're making music. You can hear them just hey, get the, get the, get the, get. And here I am, a kid in the yard, playing football with my friends. There goes the football. I let it go, and I go sit right on that floor, and I watch. I watch. And that's when I seen the drum, and I said, you know what? I tried the guitar. I tried the bass. I seen those drums. And I said, I can do what that guy is doing. Why? I don't know, but Daddy had a problem with a drummer. He just couldn't keep one? Daddy just couldn't keep a drummer okay. because he was always late. Well, because it was really your job. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go again. And all of a sudden, I just turned my attention to the drums. And I said, man, I can do this. But Daddy never asked me to play. I just looked at it and I said, I want to play the drums now. As a kid, it's set up in our utility room. And here I am. Daddy was working offshore, seven on, seven off. And when he was going away, I was back there practicing. practicing. And back then, we had the vinyl. It's hard to keep the vinyl playing on that needle because it scratched. Oh, uh -huh. oh, 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 it scratched. So I had to take the vinyl and play it at least as far as I can from the drum kit because it would skip. <laughs> so I put it on way in the, in the, like in the living room and I, w I run back to the utility room. I can hear oh. it. That's how I used to practice all these songs. Wow. Yeah. You were determined, weren't you? I was you? determined. And you my, really my brothers and sisters outside playing with the kids. But I was always trying to play drums. So Daddy went to a show one time and uh, his drummer didn't show up. They were supposed to start playing at 4 o'clock. The guitar player came over. He says, Chubby. And I'm in the yard, full of grass, playing football. Chubby, hey, you're supposed to be playing a, a, a show tonight with my dad. Yeah, but we need a drummer. What happened to the drummer? He's not there, and it's 5 o'clock. We were supposed to start at 4. He needs me to play with him? He said, yes, yeah, he does. I said, you got to be kidding me. You still remember that as a happy moment. I can see it on your face. Yeah, yeah. So here you are asking me, did you ever play with your dad? Yeah. So daddy calls me up and sent his guitar player to come get me.
Because there ain't no cell phones back in the day. You got to go to people's houses. That's true. You got to see him in person. You got to go see him. I know where he's at. He's at his cousin Velma house. And there I was in the yard, full of dirt, full of grass. Get in the car. We got to go. We get to, <laughs> we get to the American Legion. The guitar player didn't even put the car in park. I was already at the door. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so this guy at the door, the bouncer goes, hey, kid, hey, what are you doing in here? I said, I'm going to play with my daddy. Who's your daddy? I said, Roy. Roy Carey is my daddy. He needs me to play with him. You can't come in here, then the guitar player come around. Hey, hey, he's with me. He's with Oh, okay, I know he knew the guitar player. Yeah. So here it is. I get behind the drums, and uh, Daddy says, man, we got to get going quick. This your first time ever, right? Ever, it ever. Never rehearsed with Daddy. Never rehearsed. I just was watch. I would watch, watch, watch. I knew all my Daddy's songs because I was just paying attention. <laughs> like you said, you saw it in my eyes. He saw it in my eyes. <laughs> I never rehearsed with my Daddy. I would go to, I would go to their rehearsals. But I wouldn't rehearse with him. He had his drummer. He had his band. I would just sit and watch every instrument. I was just that determined. I just sat and watched. But he knew that his son had a passion. He knew his son had a, ta a talent that he knew that I could play. But he hear me practicing. Yeah, he knew you were working on he it. He knew I was working on it. I never practiced with the band, but I was still playing his songs because I would know this would be what they're going to do tonight because I would go in there and imitate. This is what the drummer going to do. You know? So I learned how to play the songs on my own. And then when Daddy heard that, then he says, you guys, you're going to have to go get Chubby. And he says, uh, the guitar player says, we never re re rehearsed with you, but he stuttered. He said, no, we rehearsed with you, but do your best. I played the gig and some. People, I bet you were high as a kite. I oh, bet yeah. you were so happy, huh? Oh, yeah. Music, that was my high. That was my high. Right How about your Daddy say that night? Do you remember? He said, unbelievable, son. He said, I didn't know you could pull it off. Four hours of music. I knew all his songs. This setting back there. You know what's the funny thing? My son did the same thing with me. I was wondering. So, so this this whole thing, this whole family piece of it is you passed it down to your children too. My son you? used to sit behind our drummer. Uh -huh. I would be rehearsing, and he he would kind of imitate. Air. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah. yeah. He played drums. He would just sit there. And he played behind the drummer. I could see him, and I'm watching. I said, "That's what I did when yeah. I was a boy." Yeah. Does he have the passion too? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And not only that, my son played in my band, and we won a Grammy together. That's got to be <laughs> the most wow moment. It was wild. You know, to say that, you know, here I am knowing I played behind my father. And, um, and like, your son played and my behind, son behind, you. behind me. But and, now it's but nationally recognized. It I mean, is. How cool. But for, how cool is this to say that I was just doing it for a hobby, uh, just for fun? Because my dad was hardcore uh, uh, workers out in the farm. They were farmers, mm -hmm. you know? And they'd come back home. They would have their beer, cigarette, and music, but they'd pull out the instruments. For me, that was awesome. To see them come out off work after a long day, says, we're going to have a bushery, or we're going to cook a pot of gumbo, or some jambalaya, or red beans, and we're going to make uh, 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 some music afterwards. That was unbelievable, to grow up in our family, in our household, in that environment. Is that not a blessing? Is that not like a huge blessing? Blessing. And now, you, now people call you an ambassador. Because and of what, you know, what just is, yeah, what's like natural yeah. and, and what, how we yeah. live. You've been able to take it all over this country, all over the world. If you look at this table, just like I was saying, if you look at this table, and there it is. This is the United States, and that's Canada. I have, I told my wife, she said, well, point to a state that you haven't been to. I'm, I removed my hand. I said, I've been to every state there yeah. is, and some. And played in them all. And played in every state there is. So I get back home, Herman Fugilake tells me, well, I'm sitting here on a set with uh, Chubby Carrier, the legendary, the living legend. And I kind of look over and goes, living legend? I'm not ready for that. I ain't that old. Yeah, really. You know, <laughs> you're way too young to be a living legend, but there you have it. He's there always you are. Chubby, you've been playing over 30 years. Can you, does it seem like that? Does it seem like it's no. been that much? I don't even see it like that. But when I'm teaching the younger generation, and Herman says, what are you doing? You're teaching the little Pops and the little Waynes and the same old two steps. That's the younger generation. That's what your dad did with you. He said, you are our living legend. Then you talk, you talk to uh, Don Mayer. Uh, uh, Cravens. Uh, Don you know, Cravens. I talked to uh, the mayor of our yeah. Mr. Don, Don Cravens. Cravens. Mm -hmm. He come on the radio station and said, we're sitting here with our ambassador of Zydeco. I there said, ambassador of Zydeco. Here we go. You know, again, it just feel like yesterday. <laughs> but he says, you've been at it for a long time, Chubby. You're not just coming up learning how to play Zydeco. You learn how to play in the 70s with your grandfather and you, your dad and your cousins. Now you up here teaching the younger generation. You know what? You went out there. Here's the United States, yes. 
you represent Louisiana really well. And you do. And you do. You represent Zydeco music really well, your family and tradition really well. Your heritage is here. So let me hear a little of your heritage real yeah. quick and because so I don't want today's show to get wide without hearing some of this because well, yeah. you're ready for some toe tapping. Now here we go. <laughs> Talking about watching Pass by Two, yeah. Clipping Chenier, uh -huh. this was my favorite song, Two Little Toes on Toe. Okay. Every now and then I'm going to see my little girl. <laughs> something to me, I mean, that moved me to get up out of that bed and motivated me is to watch that man perform. I mean, he had such a talent. He was like my Ray Charles of Zydeco. Mm -hmm. I was like, listen to how this man is playing his accordion. It was before it's time. His it was time. a part of him, though. It was just a part of who he was. Just I like mean, it's a part of who you are. Yeah. Now, what about the young ones coming up? What are you doing with them? What's happening with the youngsters, what kind of fell apart is that it's, it's gone. It's not say all the way gone, but you can see it sneaking out of the family, out of the heritage, out of the, out of the tradition, and you don't see it a lot anymore. It's like today, today's families don't have the time to teach their kids the instruments. No, they got those Ataris and those Nintendos and those Wii's. It's Wii too much too. of this. I'm gonna order your pizza, and you can go play Nintendo at Ralph's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh -huh. I'm gonna just dump you off at Dave's house. And you can go play Wii or whatever you want to play, but I got things to do. Right. And they don't have accordion at Dave's house. No, no accordion, no instruments. Yeah. So all my family, at the time, like I said, we had all our instruments sitting at home. And like I said, when we, when we would get done with our work, this is what we did. We played music as a family. Mm -hmm. My family right. actually started off because that's the ones who sit and start playing first and the kids start getting involved with it, you know? So what's happening now with the younger generation, like I said, they're being shooed off too much. You know, go to, go to your room and play your Wii, Nintendo, your PlayStation, just go. And <laughs> instead of saying, you know what, mommy's gonna buy you a set of drums or an accordion. So I got a little program that I'm teaching today. It's called Zydeco from A to Z. Okay. And I'm teaching a lot of the kids uh, uh, about the history of Zydeco, the instruments that's involved in Zydeco, and where did it all come from? Where did it all come from? So I'm teaching this. I just did this this past week at the Acadiana Symphony Orchestra Conservatory. How exciting. How exciting. I brought all these T-Tiny accordions and washboards and guitars and bass and drums. Those kids loved it. The first day was just 
introduction, the second day that we start at nine, right? They were there at eight forty-five. So I get kind of like you when you were a kid, huh? <laughs> yeah. you know, I hate to do this, we're just about out of time. Yeah, I know, the yeah. show is wrapping up, but I do yeah. want to just say really quickly that you know what you you know what your grandpa brought to you and your dad, yes. now you yeah. and the next generation. It really is the music is living and yeah. evolving and. So a lot of that's because of you. And I want to continue it I, because you know what? The next year, I can't do this all my life. It's going to end somewhere. But I want to know that we got the next generation getting started today. Right. That road is no longer graveled. That road is paved. It's paved. We just need to now take it to the airways. Take huh? it to the airways. Get so. the wings on those kids and let them go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being here today and, and for you sharing for your music me. and sharing all that you do. And, and thank you for being an ambassador for Body Co. Thank you for having me. This means a lot to me. Oh, thank you. And thank you for watching The Extra Mile.